there anyone else that goes into another room when your husband eats chips or cereal? Is it, is it just me? Confession is good for the soul, right? Huh? It's a black dot. You're right. It's a black dot. <laughs> but I'm working on it, aren't I, honey? Huh? <laughs> Did you hear him? I just automatically go to the other room now. I'm working on it. We're changed from one degree of glory to another. Is that right? The more we yield to our spirit, the more we overcome our flesh. Amen. I was laughing at Landon. And, uh, hey, I get laughed at a lot, you know, the things that I say up here, but <laughs> about our lives being directed by the tongue of our mouth, as, as opposed to the tongue of our shoe, I guess. I, I know I'm going to pay for that. Y'all know that, right? Oh, thank you, Lord. All right. As he said, we're going to get in the word, and I'm sorry about this. We are on we are on week 10 of our series of divine healing and I just encourage you if you have missed any of these and especially the first few of the series uh, I just encourage you to go back and listen. I'm going to say this again um, in order to receive divine healing we must be convinced that healing is the will of God for us. And until we get that established in our lives, uh, then we're not going to be able to receive. You understand? Yeah, because faith begins where the will of God is known. Is that right? And, and so uh, you may have come from a background that you weren't taught that divine healing is for today. And you may have all kinds of arguments why you believe it isn't. Uh, but I believe this, when we come before the Lord and we come to his word and we ask him to teach us, that he will reveal truth to us. Uh, amen? Amen. And uh, so I just, I encourage you, we don't want, when we hear a truth, and again, we don't take a man's word for it, but we look in the word, is that right? And when, when, we, when we see something in the word that doesn't... Um, agree with our lives or agree with what we've been taught or if we somehow reason out uh, reason out that truth in you know there is a man's wisdom is that right and we resort to our own human wisdom and reasoning sometimes um, a lot of times actually but if we'll be determined that when we see something in his word that we honor his word and we come to him and we say, Lord, I, there's a lot I don't understand about this, but I want to know truth. And I'm not going to set this aside and I'm not going to just go on with my life like you didn't say this to me. Right? Amen. And so that's just, that's, a, that's honor for his word. And, uh, and again... Faith begins where the will of God is known. So in any area of our lives, uh, whether it be healing for our bodies or finances or relationships or our destiny or deliverance from addiction or whatever it may be, our faith in God to receive what we need from him only comes one way, and that's by hearing what God has to say about it. Amen. Amen. So I want to just start tonight. Uh, I want to say this too. I encourage you. It matters what you listen to. It matters what you feed on. Amen. And if we're not feeding on, uh, I'm, I don't know how else to say it other than if we're not feeding on uh, ministers who preach faith, Amen. Who preach the word, the word and the spirit, the word and the spirit, uh, then we need to change who we're listening to. Amen. Amen. We are going to be a product of what we feed on. 
And so I encourage you where, where healing is concerned. Let me give you, I'm not saying that this is the only people. Uh, if you're born again, the Spirit of God dwells in you and you're led by the Spirit of God. But sometimes we just don't know where to go to feed. And uh, you can tune in to every Tom, Dick, and Harry and their grandma in the earth because of the internet now. And just because they're on the internet does not, does not mean that we need to be given our ear to them. Amen. So where, where healing is concerned, where faith is concerned, I encourage you, go on to YouTube, listen to Pastor Keith Moore. Amen. Listen to Pastor Nancy Dufresne. Uh, listen to uh, Jeremy Pearsons. Amen. Listen to Brother Kenneth e. Hagan. Amen. Listen to Brother Copeland. Amen. Amen. All right, I want to read uh, a word of the Lord. And uh, we've read this before, but I kid you not, it is speaking. And how many of you know that that's how God's word is? Amen. Uh, that it never expires, and it's always speaking. It's always alive. It's always moving. It's always talking to us where we are right now, where we are right now. And, and so, honestly, I feel like uh, I said, Lord, I could just read this and, and preach off of, off of this tonight. Uh, you can find this on our website, I believe, on the app. Uh, if not, you will soon be, be, be able to. How many of you have noticed that we have a new website? So we're doing, not all of you, but some. Uh, so we're tweaking some of that, all right? All right, this is a, a word of the Lord that came through Pastor Nate, and it was in the fall of uh, 2020. And it says, seasons are changing, are you aware? Change is coming, change is here. And so there are new patterns for you to walk in and do. Say, he's talking to me. Okay. Don't discern with only your eyes or you won't have a clue. You see, this season is brand new. I have arranged this season from the beginning of time. Harvest season, harvest season is here. H-E-A-R. Harvest season is, oh, season is here. What does that mean? We need to be hearing something. Right? We need, to hear, we need to be hearing what God is saying, not what the news is saying. We don't need to be hearing what the news is saying. We need to be hearing what God is saying. And then hear H-E-R-E as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I put one of those Listerine strips in my mouth before I came up. And it's kind of kind of talking to me, kind of like Landon uh, on their wedding day. He pulled out one right before he kissed Courtney in the ceremony. Is this right? Oh, when you were walking up. I'm sorry. But like the whole package came out and he put it in his mouth, the whole package. So he was kind of trying to regain consciousness actually through the, through the ceremony and stuff. <clears throat> He had fresh breath, though. Okay. Uh, harvest season is here, but you must pick up the sickle and the spear. means we've got something to do, don't we? Make the declaration, I will not be taken out, but I am moving with and partnered with what he is about. There is in this season a strength from within, and so it is set and begins. Partner with my promises as you walk each day. You will recognize them as a substance that establishes your way. Let me ask you something. As you're spending time in, in God's word, uh, just these, these, last, these last little bit, these last several weeks, even maybe a few months as you're spending time in his word, does it seem like every single word is just penetrating your spirit man? Is that right? Yeah. Uh, and, and so he is so amplifying his word. He is so bringing clarity. Uh, we're seeing like we haven't seen before. You know when you're reading the word and you end up highlighting every chapter, every verse in the chapter, I said, Lord, this is so good. Uh, God's speaking to his people. Amen. Amen. 
The reality of your partner will continue to increase and carry with it supernatural peace. So pause in this place and make a note. It's time for you to get out of the boat. My word will be there loud and clear. Come on now. Will be there loud and clear. It will be undeniable that I am near. My directions are not burdensome or more than you can bear. They are precious gems entrusted to you. Priceless, valuable, and rare. Put them on high and on display. They will keep you and establish you in my way. The assembly I have designed and called you to be a part operates and functions when you yield to the heart. Don't be filled with care because of this and that. Do, do you hear that? Don't be, don't be filled with care because of this and that. What does the Lord tell us to do with care? To cast it on him. Is this a suggestion? No. We as God's people take, take God's commands to us as suggestions sometimes. He didn't suggest that we, he, that we do that. He commanded us to do that. We cast the whole of our care upon him. Amen. I've known this season and where you are at. Honor my word as it is a must for you to dwell in the place of great trust. There is joy ahead for my people, I say. Joy ahead. Come on now. The path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter. You're not going to get that message from listening to the news. You're not going to get the message that your path is growing brighter and brighter. And this is the promise of the Lord to you by giving your ear to anything except what God has to say. Days of fulfillment you have consecrated your way. Don't be distracted or pulled aside. Don't be ashamed or convinced to hide. Stand tall and be bold so others can see. It won't be long before you are with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, those, those are good words. And he's given us instructions. Is that right? And I know people who come to church on Wednesday nights are interested in hearing the Lord's instructions for their lives. Amen? All right. So tonight we're going to talk about changes. Changes, changes, changes. It's good to change. Oh, in the first place, I'm going to do my best to stick to, to my notes because I think the notes are really good. Just saying, I do. I think the notes are good. And, uh, and there's a lot that I want to get through that I know that doesn't come as a, as a shocker to you. Uh, but the first place that we as Christians change, as Christians, as God's people, the first place that change needs to happen is where? In our thinking. The first place that changes, change needs to occur in a Christian is in our thinking. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is a real, uh, probably familiar scripture if you've been in church any length of time. But what does this mean? Not to be conformed by the world. Uh, to not allow what is on the outside of us, what is in the world, the pressures of this world to come in upon us and conform us to their way of thinking, their way of being, and their way of doing. Amen. Amen. And so he goes on to tell us that we need to be transformed and transformation comes from the inside out. Is that right? We're talking about born again, born again people of God here. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we have to do something with our mind. And we as God's people have got to develop and grow. This doesn't happen overnight. But to have a sound, disciplined mind. Amen. Amen. To have a sound Discipline to have a disciplined mind means if we're going to be disciplined in anything, we don't just do it once. Is that right? All right. So we change our thinking and we change our lives. Amen. Amen. We change our thinking and we change our lives. Christians are not bound. Are you a Christian tonight? Are you born again? Let me see your hand if you're born again. So we are not bound by the devil. 
Jesus, Jesus defeated the devil. Is that right? No match for us. Jesus took care of the devil. So any, anything in our lives that have us bound is not because of the devil. We are, we would, we're bound by wrong thinking. We're bound by wrong thinking. So it matters what we do with our mind. And the Bible instructs us that we are not to be conformed to this world, but be, tra but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And His Word will do the work. Amen. Aren't you thankful that His Word will do the work? Amen. One of the things that's going to help us so much in this day and hour that we live in is establishing some things in our lives called non-negotiables. Do you have any non-negotiables in your life, in your family, right? Well, I'm just going to talk about one, possibly, possibly two here. But a non-negotiable is Hebrews 10.25. And I'm telling you, having this non-negotiable in our lives is going to help us be the people that God has called us to be in this day and hour. He didn't call for his church to go out weak, wimpy, and defeated. Right. Amen. Amen. Uh, and so this non-negotiable is found in Hebrews 10.25. And I realize that I'm talking to the choir tonight, but how many of you know the choir sometimes needs a reminder as well? Amen. And there's more than just the people in this room who are going to hear this. But in this day and in this hour, a non-negotiable that must be in every child of God's life is this verse. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Now I'm going to ask you, is this a suggestion? It is not. It is a command from the Lord. Amen. That we don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together as uh, some have made a habit of. And he goes on to tell us that we should be gathering even more as we see the day approaching. What day is that? The day of the coming of the Lord, of his appearing. Amen. And so we've got to make this in our lives. You know, we were discussing this in women's prayer, and Becky made, uh, made this statement uh, that I believe she had heard from, from a former pastor. But in a Christian's life, listen, we make the decision to go to church one time. One time. We make the decision to go to church one time in our lives. What does that mean? It's a non-negotiable. The Lord said not to forsake the assembling of myself together. Amen. Amen. So it's not that I wake up on Sunday or I, or I go to work on Wednesday and I see how I feel or I see uh, what other things are going on in our lives. I'm telling you, church has got to be our life. And if this offends you, I'm telling you to read the word and take it up with the Lord. Amen. It, church should be our life right now. And all the more as you see the day approaching. And all the more. That doesn't mean less and less. It means more and more. It's a non-negotiable. I, I, I don't set the... Uh, kind of sounded like Mel Tillis there for a second, didn't I? I don't set the, the priorities in my life by what I feel. I make a decision one time. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that means we're in the house of the Lord on the day and the night that we're supposed to be in the house of the Lord. It's a command. And you know what? God helps us more than we even realize. But just by obeying this command right here, he's helping us more than what we even realize. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm going to move on and not talk about the other non-negotiable right now. Uh, but listen, listen to this statement. Boy, this just come up, come up and out of me. Yes, we're still talking about divine healing, but we're talking about faith tonight, okay? If we don't consider the commands he gives us as final authority, 
if we haven't made the decision in our lives that God's word is final authority, not human reasoning, not what I think, not what I think Papa and, and Mima uh, think, but his word. If I have not made in my heart the decision that God's word is final authority, his commands, his commands is final authority, then we won't consider the gifts he gives as final authority in our lives either. Amen. And healing is a gift. Healing is a gift that was paid for for us by the Lord Jesus Christ. But if we take light his commands, we will take light his gifts. So his word, final authority in our lives. Amen. Amen. So faith. Talking about faith. What Without faith, it is, we can please God sometimes without faith. No. Is that what the word says? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Why is that? Because we can't see him with our natural eyes. So we must have faith. Amen? If we're going to partner with him, if we're going to come to him, if we're going to talk to him, if we're going to receive from him, uh, if, if, if we're going to be uh, uh, people in the earth who bring the kingdom of God to bear in other people's lives, it's going to be by faith. Amen. So without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of him, them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 6, 12 says, Through faith and patience we inherit the promises. Through faith and patience we inherit the promises. Amen. Hebrews 11, 2 says, By faith the elders obtained a good report. Your good report that you're looking for is in the word of God. And you're going to lay hold of it by faith. You're not going to an outside source to find a good report. Amen. An outside source can confirm your good report. But we find our good report in the word of God. Hebrews 11.2. By faith, the elders obtained a good report. If I'm needing a good report in my life for anything, anything in my life, anything, I go to the Word. That's where my good report is. Amen. Everything that we receive from God is through faith. By grace, through faith. Amen. Faith is the currency of heaven. The, the way that we do business with God, the way we do business uh, on the earth is with faith. It's the transaction that we use, faith. So everything we need for this life has already been purchased and delivered to us through Jesus. Do you believe that? Everything. He's already given unto us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything I need for my life, everything has already been given to me. Has already been given to you. Man, you ought to smile. Just sit there and smile. Amen. Already been given to us through Jesus. But we still have to, have to open the door and receive it. So, faith, faith opens the door to the power and to the promises of God. Faith is what opens the door to the promises and the power of God uh, to flow into our lives. Amen? Our faith is not the power. Our faith is the avenue in which the, God's power flows. Amen? Amen. And, and so uh, faith is what opens the door. Faith is what opens the door to his promises. Faith is what opens the door, uh, allowing us to receive all that, all that he's given us. But let me, let me make this very clear. When we're opening the door by faith, we're opening the door to a person. We're not opening the door to a principle. We're opening the door to a person. And sometimes, sometimes as Christians, we get uh, really hung up on trying to work principles. Is that right? Uh, our, our help is the Lord Jesus Christ. Our, our help is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not in my ability to, to work a principle. Not in my ability to cross all my T's and dot my I's. 
my faith opens the door to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about two hindrances to our faith. Are you all ready? So last week we talked about our faith uh, being voice activated, that we need to be saying something. Is that right? If there is something that is mocking your redemption, you better be talking to it. You'd better be saying something. Amen. And this is absolutely true. Uh, but there can be things that are in our hearts that if we don't deal with them, um, faith will be uh, diminished. It'll be choked out. It won't have the full expression that is necessary to, to lay hold of uh, the promises, to receive the promises. That's right. So we can, we can confess we can confess, we can confess, we can confess until we're blue in the face. But if there are things sitting in our hearts that God has dealt with us about, it's going to diminish and choke out our faith. Amen. There's hindrances to our faith. And aren't you glad that he tells us what that is so that our faith can be in full operation? Amen. Amen. So one of the things is worry. Worry. Do y'all say it like that? Worry? Worry? Worry. No! Worry. Worry. Now I just sound funny. <clears throat> John 14.1. Let's look and see what that says. John 14.1. I'm going to speed along right here. Do not let your hearts be troubled, distressed, or agitated. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Does this sound like a suggestion? It is a command. Therefore, circumstances do not dictate the obedience of this. My will does. Amen. Amen. You can say, well, I just can't help being upset. I can't help being worried. That's not what the Word says. That's not what the Word says. Obviously, we know that you is the understood subject in, in this sentence. And it says, do not let your hearts be troubled. And God never gives us a command that we are not able uh, to do. Amen. He's not unjust. He wouldn't tell us, command us to do something that we're not able to do. Amen. Uh, same chapter, John 14, verse 27 and 28, it says, Peace I leave with you, my own peace I now give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. It says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. He says it again. Neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Amen. This, 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 this is a command. And if he says that I have the ability to not allow this, then it is up to me whether I allow it or not. And the very next, the very next word, a uh, few words in verse 28 says, You heard me tell you. You heard me tell you. So if we're not going to be afraid, if we're not going to be agitated, if we're not going to be worried, then we better uh, having been listening to what he's saying to us. Amen. We've got to answer it with something. Worry. Once again, do not worry. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, the New Living Translation says, Don't worry about some things. Don't worry uh, about the little stuff. Don't worry about anything. Instead... Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. How many of you know that there's a lot of instructions right there and every one of them is important? He tells us to not to worry. Listen, worry is going to sit in our hearts and choke out our faith. Amen. Don't worry about anything. Instead... Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. In other translations, it says, With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Every single one of those is important. Do not worry. Take your request and your, pet your petitions to God and let thankfulness be in your heart. 
Amen. Thanksgiving. Thanking God that he is faithful, that he is good, that he is watching over his word to perform it, that you have delivered me from all fear. Father, I thank you for your goodness and your kindness. Amen. Amen. Uh, Yeah, and then verse 7 in Philippians 4, 6 through 7. uh, And thank him for all he has done. Verse 7, then. Say then. Say, not, not before, not before uh, we put worry aside, not before we take it to the Lord in prayer, not before thanksgiving and worship and praise is coming out of our mouth towards him, not before, but after we do that, verse 7 says, then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. Amen. Amen. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. So again, we treat worry uh, like it's an option sometimes. And the truth is, it's a sin. It's a sin because God said, do not do it. God said not to worry. So therefore, if we worry, we're sinning. Amen. And you know, sometimes people wear worry as a badge. They do. They just wear it as a badge right here. And they're so proud of how much they worry about their family because you know the, the measure of your love for your child is measured by how much you worry and are concerned and, and have anxiety about them. Say it again. Lies. That is a lie. That is a lie propagated from the pit of hell. Worry uh, and worrying about our children and worrying about our family does not glorify God and does not make you a good mama. And it does not make you a good grandma. It displeases the Lord and it is indicative of having no faith in Him whatsoever to do what He said He would do for our families. Y'all still love me? It's the truth. I don't ever want to come across harsh, but it's the truth. And there's times that we need to get the devil under our foot, our foot on his neck, and quit allowing him to push our buttons, amen, where our family is concerned. Amen. So, we're commanded not to worry, but that doesn't mean that we do nothing. Right? So we're not worrying, but that doesn't mean that we do nothing. Our faith is to be engaged. Is that right? Faith and thanksgiving. Our faith is to be engaged in addressing whatever it is that came to trouble us. Amen. All right. Uh, Take no thought. Say, take no thought. Uh, Matthew 6, 25 and 31, you know, in Matthew 6, and, and it's uh, talking about in Matthew 6, 33, that seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? And all these things shall be added unto you. But it starts out in uh, Matthew 6, 25, and it says, Take no thought of what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, and what you're going to put on. Uh, for, he said, Take no thought for it. Take no thought. Well, what we eat and what we drink and what we put on is really of little significance in the big scheme of things. Is that right? So if God is telling us to take no thought in this area, he would most definitely be telling us to not take any thoughts in uh, the more important things of life. Amen? Take no thought. Take no thought. And then it goes down to uh, verse 31. Um, I don't have this here, uh, but there it is. Therefore, take no thought saying. How do we take a thought? By saying. You know, every thought that comes to you is, uh, does not originate with you. You know? And so there are thoughts, there are troubling thoughts that, uh, that can come to us. And this is part of having a sound, disciplined mind, which comes from the renewing of our mind and the exercising of not letting our mind just run wild with whatever comes to it. How many of you know we teach our kids that just because a thought comes into your head doesn't mean it needs to come out of your mouth? 
And some parents need to teach that. Well, I just need to teach them to be free and to express themselves. No, you don't. No, you don't. You need to teach them that not every thought that comes through their mind, they need to express through their mouth. They need to be trained and equipped to know what thought comes from their flesh, what thought comes from the enemy, and what thought comes from the Spirit of God. That's what they need to be taught. Amen. Amen. So we don't, we don't take thoughts, and, and the way that we take thoughts is we say them, all right? And so when a troubling thought comes, no, I recognize this does not bring life. It does not bring peace. It does not bring joy. It is not from the Lord. I'm not taking that thought, and we resist it and say no. And then that doesn't mean it's going to disappear forever. It may come back again and again and again, uh, but we stay with it and we resist it and we don't, and we don't get tempted to talk about it. Because once we start talking about it, we start building strongholds in our minds that we don't want there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, you know, we talked about the nobleman's son. Whew, i got to hurry. I'm going to do this next part in tongues. And, and, and y'all and interpret. <laughs> I, I kid, I kid. Um, okay, so last week we talked about the nobleman after he left Jesus. And, uh, you know, Jesus, he was asking Jesus to, to come heal his son. And, uh, and it looked like he was probably a day, day and a half away from where his son was, if you keep reading in the passage. But Jesus just gave uh, his command and said, go your way, your son lives. And uh, you can better believe in as he walked home, in that day and a half, you can better believe it wasn't cotton candy, pie in the sky, just, you know. Uh, no, you can better believe he was bombarded with thoughts. He was bombarded with thoughts from the enemy, and you know he had to answer those thoughts. He had to answer them. And, and so the same is true. The same is true for us when we receive a promise of God and we're standing on his word. Don't, don't think it weird that opposing thoughts come. All right? The enemy's after one thing, and that's the word of God in you. And all he needs to know is how much pressure does it take to get you to let go of what he's told you. Yeah. Amen. So we answer the thoughts. And we go back to, nope, God said. Nope, God said. Nope, God said. And I'm telling you, uh, there's a lot, I would dare say, even in this room, that we need to gird up our loins with the truth of God's word, and that's what we need to be saying. No, God said. And we need to stay the course. Amen. Because God's watching over his word to perform it. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so uh, the other thing, so we're not going to worry. And we're not going to worry because it's a sin. Amen. God said not to worry. Uh, but we're not just going to walk around not worrying. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry. We're going to do what he told us to do. Amen. Amen. So another thing that sits on our faith that will hinder uh, from us being able to receive all that God has for us, healing included, is not walking in divine love. First of all, we need to establish that the law that governs heaven, that governs the kingdom of God, is divine love. And I, I think it would help us to call it divine love, not just love. You know, we say walk in love. We need to walk in love. We need to walk in divine love. Because so many times when we just say love, we need to walk in love, then uh, it kind of provokes an emotional response, doesn't it? It kind of provokes an emotional human type love that is very conditional, that is very much responsive to the things out here. Yeah, divine love. So 1 John 4, 8 tells us that God is love. He's a faith God, but he's not faith. He's love. God is love. Amen. Galatians 5, 6 tells us that faith works by love. 
Faith works by love. Do we want our faith to be in, in full operation? Yes. yes, amen, we do. Faith works by love. And, and, and yes, it's twofold. We absolutely must know God's love for us. We, we must know the love that God has for us. And the more that we know, the more that we spend time with him and his word, that he's, it's just the entire Bible is a love letter from God about how much he loves us. And, and so we do absolutely have to be convinced of God's love for us. Uh, but also, our love walk towards others matters. Amen, it does. If our love walk is out of order, our faith will not work as it should. I know. I know. It is true, though. And you know, when God brings a word to us, uh, even when he brings correction... And I'm not saying this is a corrective word, but when he brings correction to us, um, it brings hope, it brings peace, and it brings empowerment. It does not bring torment. Hmm, thank you, Lord. All right. So we must make a note here that when we were born again, born of his spirit, that he recreated us. Our spirit man, your spirit man, was recreated with the very substance of God. Amen. Come on now. He put his love in us. So we're not trying to produce the flow of his divine love, but we do have to acknowledge that it's in us. And we have to learn and grow and develop in drawing from our spirit instead of reacting from our flesh. Amen. Human love is so reactive. Human love is so reactive and so conditional. And God's love isn't reactive and God's love is not conditional. Amen. So up until we were born again, we were only trained with human love. That, that's all we had, right? Right? And so, human love, emotional, flesh-ruled, conditional love. And after we're born again, uh, we must learn, we must grow, and we must train ourselves. I said this a while ago. We must train ourselves. This is a training and developing. This is not something that we do overnight. That we learn and grow and train ourselves to be led by our spirit and not by our flesh. Amen. Philemon 6, and it's important to know that God's love is on the inside of us. God's love. Our spirit man is created with the very same substance that God is made of, and that substance is love. So Christians are most frustrated when we're not walking in love because we're violating who we really are. Philemon 6 says that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So we want our faith to be effective. We want it to work. We want it to accomplish. We want it, uh, yeah, to be effectual. Is that right? Well, one of the ways where, where uh, love is concerned is by acknowledging that the love of God is on the inside of us. And, and, and not just on the inside of us, but it's the real us. It, it's our spirit man. Amen. It's, it, it's God's love. Oh, Father, help us. Galatians 5.22 says, The fruit of the Spirit... We know this. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, uh, faith, etc. I, I want to read this from the Passion Translation, which I believe is what he has up there. It says, But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions. Come on now. He's the one that put it in you. He's the one that put it in you. Joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. So when we're talking about walking in divine love, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about yielding to our spirit man where, these, uh, where this love resides. 
instead of reacting from our flesh or trying to produce love uh, from our natural senses. Does that make sense? Brother Hagen said this, Brother Kenneth e. Hagen. He said, when symptoms start to come on my body, the first place I look is my love walk. The first place I look at is my love walk. For a step out of love is a step out of his kingdom and his authority. Amen. So when we, uh, when we see things that are out of line in our lives, this would behoove us. Uh, and, and listen, no matter how many messages that we have heard on this, um, of, of the necessity of walking in love. Don't you want your faith to be in full force, to have full expression? Amen. Then we must take seriously this command of walking in love and paying attention to how, uh, how we are treating one another. It matters. Faith works by love. Amen. All right, I'm going to stop right here, uh, and we're going to play. It's about a nine- or ten-minute clip uh, that I'd like for y'all to listen to. I sent him the wrong numbers, and so bear with him for just a second. He's going to have to speed through. Um, and this was from a camp meeting uh, that is going No, not a camp meeting, a healing crusade that is going on. And she, this is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, and she is currently, she's flowing in the gifts of the Spirit through words of knowledge right now. Uh, and then she begins, begins to talk to us. And uh, again, remember, we're talking about change. We're talking about change that needs to occur in, in our lives. Um, okay, are we at the, thir the 113 mark? No, no, this is your time. Maybe back I up just remember, a little bit. Uh, Sorry. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. There's three people in here that, uh, if you change the way you're handling your spouse, those problems that you've been keep you keep hitting a wall. Those things will be dealt with if you'll change that. And then there's someone else, just how you're handling a family member. Change that. Change that. You say, well, you got to give me time. No, no, no. This is your time. I remember, uh, I've told this story on different occasions, but I'm the youngest of four children. And um, my brothers were 10 years older, nine years older than my sister, three years older. And so um, I couldn't whip them physically. So I picked up another tool called my mouth. And I became very sharp with my mouth. I could bury you real quick. And I remember my 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 brother I was probably about eight eight years old one time and my brothers one of my brothers said mother her mouth is just I mean I could use my wit and just get the last word and thankfully my mother was a little bit on my side I don't know if it helped me but it was she was a little bit on my side and she said well y'all pick on her so much and she can't physically whip you so she just uses the only thing she's got left is her mouth And uh, in our family, wit was rewarded. It was a rare, it was a commodity that was so highly valued. And, you know, we just had lots, lots of activity in our house, lots of talking, lots of fun. But my dad was so quick-witted. He was, he was such a funny man. And mother, two days later, she got it. <laughs> two days later and she'd get so mad because she could never keep up with daddy verbally so all she ended up doing was sticking her tongue out at him that's the only thing she could come back at 
<laughs> Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. <laughs> and um, so Ed, Ed used to say to me when we got married, he'd say, you got the mind of a lawyer. At first I was complimented, then I thought, wait a minute. <laughs> because I knew how to win verbally. I practiced my whole life. Practiced. <laughs> and uh, I remember I had a dream one morning and uh, God showed me myself in a coffin dying prematurely. Now, this was probably, oh my goodness, around 30 years ago. And this wasn't the only thing, but there were several things he talked to me about. He wasn't sentencing me to die early. He was saying, if you keep going the way you're, gonna, you're going, this is where it's going to end you up. It's like when the prophet came to the king and said, set your house in order for you shall surely die. And uh, it looked like he didn't obey what the prophet said. Because he didn't set his house in order, he set this house in order. And he turned toward the wall and talked to God and got it straight. And before the prophet even left his courtyard, God said, go back and tell him I'm giving him 15 more years. See, it only takes a moment, just a moment to That's make a right. turn. A moment to make a turn. That's right. So one of the things God talked to me about when I woke up from that dream is he brought up this thing of your wit. I go, I was stunned. I thought, surely there's extra stars in your crown for that. <laughs> it was the least I could do for people. <laughs> it was just the least I could do. And I mean, I wasn't mean. I just knew how to Finish off the conversation. <laughs> and I was stunned. He said, quit using that in your marriage. I go, what? <laughs> and I, this is what I said to God. I said, God, I had no idea that was wrong. I, seriously, I had no idea. We weren't combative. We, I didn't, you know, I wasn't manipulative. And I just knew how to finish off the conversation on the up note, you know. And I said, I, I didn't know that. Seriously, I, did. I said, you stunned me. I don't know that's wrong. And I said, I've been so good at it. You don't know how many times I bite my tongue. You have no idea what goes on up here that doesn't get out. And so I, I said, uh, you're going to have to give me time to change that. Because I don't even know if I'd recognize when I do it. And when I said that, he says, I don't give you any time to change that. And I was stunned. And I said, you don't give me any time to change it? He said, this is what will change it. If you wouldn't say it to me, don't say it to him. If you wouldn't think it about me, don't think it about him. If you wouldn't... If you wouldn't act that way to me, don't act that way to him. I go, got it. Got it. If you wouldn't think it about Jesus, don't think it about them. If you wouldn't have that conversation about Jesus, don't have it about them. That means you don't have to go home and struggle with this change. It's done. Because some of these changes can be life and death if you don't make these changes quickly. That offense is over with. When you would, if you wouldn't be offended with Jesus, you got no right being offended with them. You say, well, they're not Jesus. He expects you to equal him, not them. And then you won't have to get, you won't have to come to your pastor and ask him to pray for you as much. And the body starts getting in line. And the mind quits being troubled and harassed and replays. And I'm trying to get past this. I'm trying to get past this. You won't have to struggle to get past it when you change you. Change you. 
because you're not anointed to change them. You're not authorized. You're authorized. And if you try to force a change on somebody else, you put yourself in a very dangerous position. You're welcome. These are the things, things have to get right in the way we think and the way we handle things. God's helping us. I said, he's helping us. He's helping us. You say, well, I don't know what I need to change. Yes, you do. Anytime I've missed God, I've always known where I missed. Always. I didn't have to go off and fast and pray. Have him to spend days in his presence. I always knew. I always knew. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I want to be right with him. I want to be right with him. I said I want to be right with him. When I'm right with him, it's easier to get everything. It's easier for my faith to work for everything else to be right. And if we leave things out of place, that one thing goes wrong, then another thing goes wrong, and another thing goes wrong. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul said, talking about taking communion, he said, for this cause, many are weak, sickly, and many sleep or die prematurely. Why? Not discerning the Lord's body. Twofold application of that. Discerning the price Jesus paid in his own body or discerning also the body of Christ. When you have a riff with somebody else in the body, there's a door open for weakness, sickness. See, it's a progression. First weakness, then sickness, then premature death. Catch it before it reaches that third phase. Well, praise the Lord. See, I thought this a healing crusade. It is. Thank you, Lord. Changes. Changes. We want to, like she said, we want our heart to be right with God. Is that right? We don't want to take his commands and what he's instructed us to do. Uh, where worry is concerned, where walking in, in love is concerned, walking in divine love. Amen. And the unity of the body and rifts between believers, it's not okay. It, 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 it's not okay. And uh, aren't you so thankful for his word? And aren't you so thankful that, like she said, uh, just like this, just like this, uh, repentance and a change can be done just like this. We don't have to go home and we don't have to lament over it and we don't have to think about it and we don't have to pour it over and over and over and over and over and over and over in our minds and, and, and try to feel better, try to feel some love, try to not worry. We just obey his word and make the change. And then his grace and his power infuses our spirit man from within and does the work. Amen. Amen. Brother Hagen tells the story of a woman uh, who was coming to his meetings. And, and when he was doing meetings, he would do it uh, a lot of times for weeks at a time. And this particular time was healing meetings that, that he was doing. But he was teaching the word. He was teaching the word. And, and he, he gave instruction. Uh, he said, now, it would be good if you could be here all week and just listen. Sit under the teaching of the word so you... Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word, is that right? And then at the end of the week, uh, I'm going to pray for you, and uh, your faith will be built up, and you'll be able to release faith and receive. All right? And, and so on one night, he was talking about... He was talking about forgiveness. He was talking about the very thing that she was talking about there, uh, rifts between people in the body of Christ and where unforgiveness had, had, had taken hold. And um, she left that meeting. I don't know what day it was on, but, but she left the meeting. And um, she, she said that she had had a rift with her brother for 25 years. She said, I need to make that right. I need to make that right. And so she called him, and uh, she made it right. 
with him. She went to bed that night in the hotel room, and uh, before she awoke the next morning, every symptom was gone. Every symptom in her body was gone. How many of you know it matters what's in our heart? And it, it matters, and, and so many times it's not a lack of confessing it, uh, the word. It's not a, a, a lack of um, fighting the good fight of faith. It is that God has dealt with us or is dealing with us about things that are in our hearts that is choking out faith. I love, love, love what she said, though. In a moment, in a moment, in a moment. We can change it in a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, and just thinking about that story here, this, um, anyway, I wrote this down. It, it's, like, it's like the package of healing, a package being delivered, all right? A package being delivered to your house, the package of healing or any other promise uh, in God's word was sitting at her front door. It was delivered to her. It was paid for. It had her name on it. It belonged to her, right? It belonged to her. It was already hers. But, but because of things, of this unforgiveness and this rift in her heart, even though that package was on her step, delivered, paid for, her name on it, it was like that chain uh, that's on the top of the door, that, those child safety things, you know. It's like a chain was on there, and she could only open the door so far. She could see the package, and she could see that it had her name on it, uh, but she couldn't get the door open to actually pick it up and receive it. And that is what it looks like when there's things we are, we are uh, harboring, harboring in, in our heart, um, the, the, the chain of unforgiveness, of not walking in divine love, the chain of worry uh, keeps us from being able for our faith to open the door and to receive what the Lord Jesus has already provided for us. Amen and amen. So just, um, just, a, just a switch, just a switch, just a switch, um, and we can make the chain change. Amen? Make the change. We want the door of our faith wide open in our lives. Stand with me. So, Lord, your word is final authority. You, you gave us instructions not to worry, but to cast the whole of our care upon you. Amen. With thanksgiving in our hearts, telling him, let him know what we need, faith in our hearts, uh, that he's going to provide for us, that he's, go he's, he, he's a good, oh... I was going to say delivery man. That sounds so um, irreverent. He's a good deliverer. He's faithful. He's a good deliverer. The, the promises and the goodness and, and everything that's in our redemption that was bought and paid for by the Lord Jesus. Um, he's, he's good. And his gifts are marvelous. Amen. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's not withholding. Listen, he's not withholding. Your package isn't lost driving around North America or in Asia somewhere. Your package is not lost. Your package of what you need, healing, provision, uh, strength, uh, deliverance from addiction, whatever it would be, it's been delivered. It's been delivered. <clears throat> it's on your front porch. It's been delivered. And so with, with faith, with faith, with faith in your hearts, you open that door and you pick up and you receive all that was freely given unto you. Amen. And, and if that door's not opening, if, if you can just see a, a little bit of it, that chain's still on the door, then we have the opportunity tonight to make the change. To make the change and to swing that door wide open. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. And in our lives, we call your word final authority. And so, Lord, changes that you've been talking to us about as we've sat here tonight, changes that need to be made in our hearts, Lord, we say, we'll, we'll make the change, Lord. We'll make the change. Right now, right now, we make the change. Right now, we make the change. We repent, Lord, of Warian. We will not glorify Warian in our life. We say, we ask you to forgive us. <clears throat> To forgive us where we uh, have spent our time worrying instead of taking you at your word and acknowledging your lordship in our lives. Hallelujah. Father, if there has been a rift, if there has been something between me and any other person, Father, I, I make the decision right now to make it right. To make it right. To make it right. And I thank you for your promise that you said you are the one who is at work within us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Glory to God. Glory to God. So I thank you, Father. I thank you for packages. I thank you. I thank you for precious promises. I thank you for packages of your promises being unwrapped tonight in people's lives. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you agree with that, say amen. Amen. Hey, before we go tonight, just just two minutes on this because there's a practical thing that we need to that we need to do concerning this. And it was before the video even came up, just <laughs> sitting there and thinking about offense. So when we talk about unforgiveness and when we talk about offense, we're sitting in this chair in here. You've heard that in church before, and you think, I'm not dealing with unforgiveness with anyone in my life right now. And that may be true. Like, there may be in your heart, there is, there's no unforgiveness towards anyone, okay? But a good thing to practice is asking the Lord, Lord, is there anything like that in me? Another, another way, a riff, offense, this is not something to just let fester in our lives. Offense is not acceptable. And, and it will keep, just like she said, something with the, the lady, something with her brother for 25 years. And so sometimes we hear these stories and we think, I don't have anything like that in my life. But there was a thought that came to you today about a person. And you blew it off. You, you just say, because what happened is you heard or you didn't hear something about a person. A thought came to you. Here's what I want to ask you. What did you do with that thought? Because if I asked you, are you offended with that person? Do you have ought against that person? You would say, no, that, no, I'm not offended with them. I don't have ought against them. Well, did you do something with the thought or not? Because if you didn't do something with the thought at that time, a seed of offense was planted and it's still there. So it's not, it's not okay for you to just think that nothing is there when something was. If you didn't say, no, I, because here's what happens. Here's how we slip into offense. When we don't open up our Lord and say, Lord, or open up our mouth. Dad, Gamma, what is it? Mouth, tongue, Lord. When we open up our mouth and say, Lord, what I thought, that thought that just came through my mind is not okay. And I acknowledge it. And I want to think about them the way that you think about them. In 1 Corinthians 13, we're told that love, and what we're talking about, love, faith works by love. Love believes the best. So if that thought, and she just said it right there, if I wouldn't think that thought about Jesus, then I shouldn't think it about them. Let me tell you something. If a thought crossed your mind about Jesus, I bet right then you'd deal with him like, oh my gosh, there's no, that is no, 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 no. I'm not taking that thought. Here's what I think about Jesus. But when it comes to people, and here's the tricky thing with offense. It usually isn't blatant. It usually isn't even something that somebody did. It's something that you perceive because that's how the enemy likes to play on us. Don't let him do that. When the thought comes, deal with it then. Treat it, treat it the way Jesus would. Believe the best of that person. 
So I want to encourage you, when those things happen, no, I'm not an offense. I'm not offended with anyone. I'm not dealing with unforgiveness with anyone. Well, did a thought come and you did, did, did you do nothing about it? Because you're going down that road right there. So when the thought comes, deal with it violently right then. One of the ways to deal with it, you know, one of the ways to deal with it when a thought comes to someone is text them and tell them something really nice about them. Be generous to them. Do something that you normally wouldn't even do. Go out of your way. You're like, no, I was thinking something almost a little bad about them, even though I wasn't really. Am I really offended? No. Well, go out of your way just to make sure and put some action to what you actually believe and do something for them then. If you're not offended with them, prove it. Prove it to yourself. It shuts the door. It slams the door to the enemy. And it allows faith to work, and it allows healing to come, and it allows God's promises to start showing up on our doorstep when we've been confessing and we've been believing, but we haven't been dealing with the thoughts. So deal with them and shut the door. Amen? Amen. All right, we love you guys. Y'all have a shift tones real quick. All right. Y'all have a great rest of the week. Deal with the thoughts. Get your kids. Love on them. You're dismissed.